Lee Ridley, uh, I was lucky enough to achieve two promotions with Scunford United, but nothing compares to the joy I experience when listening to the Aryan Hour podcast. Just a heads up, this podcast contains strong language, you know the good stuff. If this isn't for you, turn off now. For the rest of you, now fucking enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome once again to another episode of the Iron Hour podcast. Due to popular demand, we are back this week. And actually, Max, it's our 15th consecutive episode since the end of August. 15, buddy. I know, that's, that's, that's crackers. Um, we were, when we're playing Saturday, Tuesday, it, it's great. So, honestly, thank you to everyone who's been watching, everyone who's been listening, everyone who's sending questions. And, uh, yeah, we, I think we're always going to have plenty to discuss this season. So, it's been great. And we are the bantery pod, Marco, but always the clean banter, never over the line. No, but I think that's definitely, uh, definitely never a true word said. 100%. I mean, we've got a bit of a different format this week. We thought we'd spice things up a little bit. I can see you get a bit cheeky there, Marco. But what we're going to do this week is jump straight in with the questions from the fans. We'll have a little bit of a segment there. We'll get through a bit of that. Then we'll have our spy in the camp. And then, of course, at the very end, I know you guys have been asking where he is. Have we been hiding Gareth? What's going on? We'll have some thoughts from Gareth at the very end when he is available in the moonlight hours because the only time I can get hold of him these days. So let's kick off. I'll kick off with you, Marco, if that's okay. Go for it. Uh, Random questions. Damien Bolton has been in touch and Damien says, if you could fetch back one previous player, who would it be and why? Tom Pugh. No, I'm um, has he reti- can he have retired? What's the rules here? You you can bring anyone back, Marco. Oh, um, oh, that's a toughie. But I have a real soft spot, and I think he is just what we could do. It Jack Cork, a, a, a prime Jack Cork. That's interesting. Dominant. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I like Jack Cork. I'd, I'd have a Jim Goodwin if I'm being honest. Max, yeah, same to you. For a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you bring back, Max? Um, well, based on the number of offensive the f- the frustrations we've had recently, I, I would go for Billy Sharp. The, of, of all the scrum of strikers, I've seen, it would be the one that if we had one chance and you're life dependent on it, he'd be, he'd be the man I'd back. Yeah, I can see that. Right, I'd still, take, I'd still take him now. He's still scoring in League 2. For yeah, Bobby. that's true enough. <laughs> Bloody hell, yeah, you're not wrong there, mate. He's still bagsman, isn't he? As we, as I was just about to say, there it was a it was a tough tough day at the office on Saturday. Obviously, we've we've not really got the result we probably wanted against Radcliffe. So a lot of the coming questions, you know, are kind of around that, and we can we can explore that topic a little bit more and talk about the disappointment on Saturday. But Nick Bell's been in touch, Max, and Nick says, "Do you think Butler will ever change the formation during a game?" Fair enough. He wants to set up with three or five at the back, however you call them that. But Saturday was just screaming out for a change, but instead. He carries on with that same formation. And in the end, it nearly cost us all three points. I'd love to see a little bit more flexibility during the games when things aren't necessarily going to plan. I would like to see more flexibility. I definitely agree with Nick's comments on that. No relation, luckily for Nick. Um, I think back to Southport away, he, he did change formation. By by the end, we were basically playing 4-2-4. Um, but that was real, real desperation stuff. I... I, I would like to see more flexi- more flexibility unless we really start struggling in the league, though. I, I can't see Butler chucking 5-3-2 as his plan A. And Marco, same kind of question for you. Do you think Butler can be a little bit too rigid and inflexible at times? Um, at home, for sure, definitely. I mean, this, this system's worked quite well away from home. Um, we, have, we haven't won our, our last five away from home in all competitions. But against the big side, like for example, like your Curzon, well, your, your yeah. Newcastle Town, yeah. Brackley, Curzon, Scarborough. We've gone to all these places, and we lost. We lost away at Scarborough. We lost at Scarborough. Yeah, what's the other one? We beat another good team away. There's one more. South really Shields. Well. South Shields. South Shields. That's the one. And we've had they, 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 they played. They played. They played well at South Shields. Yeah, and I thought South Shields were really poor as well. But even so, it has worked out for us in those not big away games, but tougher ones. Um, they're not winning away from home. The Saturday Tuesday thing is absolutely mind boggling. And I Marco, can... can I just say, can we enter us into a Tuesday league? <laughs> like the six aside league. Mind yeah. you, we can only just get about two teams. And even <laughs> even then one won't have a striker. Um <laughs> but no, like I said, with regarding being flexible, I, I don't mind it away from home. And I know it's not pretty. 
Uh, I know we went to Chester's another one where we got a point which beforehand you'd have taken. Um, it was and, the performance at Chester that was the issue rather than the result, I think. Yeah. And it's not always going to be pretty. But at home, I do think Max is right. We we do look quite rigid. Um, if everyone's fit, I think we could play a system that we saw last year with Jimmy, uh, put in the 4-3-3. Something I'd really like to see. I, I, I'm bored of saying it now um, with two wingers. But I'm being made to it my own words because how good does Roberts look in a 10? Yeah, he looks he fantastic. Does. So, so yeah, it's, it, I really do feel for Andy because he's damned if he doesn't. He's damned if he does. It's, it's really tough. And and I was just going to pick up with you there, Max. You, you said about the Chester game, the frustration being in the performance, not necessarily in, in the result. Southport was a complete opposite of that, wasn't it? Was a terrible result. We lost three two, but the performance, the, the players were getting clapped off. You know, and it just goes to show, really. I think for us, yeah, of course, we know promotion is the goal, but we want to see a bit of football, don't we, Max? Well, with the, with the ball, I thought they looked quite reasonable the way they said, but particularly in the first hour. But I, I, I'm not prepared to endorse a performance per se when we ship three goals from three individual defensive errors. It's not as if we got stiff by the referee or Southport scored three absolute screamers. Like I'm sure Butler will pride himself on the defensive aspects being an important bit of the performance. But look, if we played as well with the ball as we did against Southport, against against Chester, against Radcliffe, against Scarborough, we'd we'd have got something out of those games. And unfortunately, those are I know we're still top. But th- those are missed opportunities, and I just hope that when we get to the end of April, we aren't ruining them. You're coming in hot today, Max. I've got to be honest, you are coming in hot. You, I love it. It's a, it's a side of you I've not seen for a while, if I'm being honest. Marco, question for you from Dave Bolton. And he says, do you think this is how we will play all season? Fantastic in some and just frustrating in other games. Is this just our dip of the season or are players and managers still learning on the job? Um, That's a great question. Yeah, I think it's a bit of both. Look, Andy Butler's his first job in... In men's football, um, we all know that. Let's hope it's a dip because if we go through a dip and we're still out top of the league, then so be it. But with, with regarding playing sort of a type, this type of football, I think it's just consistency. Um, and this week proved that perfectly with the, the result of Farsley and then what we dish up at home to Radcliffe. It's just it's chalk and cheese. It's two such different performances. Um, and I think that's why the frustrations, it's not necessarily, obviously we are top of the league, but I think the fans are more frustrated because we've seen what we could do on Tuesday. Um, and then, like I said, to dish that out on Saturday, it was just a bit of a, a shit show. But like, in all, all respect to Radcliffe, I thought they were probably definitely happier with teams, but I, they didn't put a bad performance in. That game plan, teams have shown in the past two seasons, time and time again, we cannot play against that. Last year, we had the likes of Butterfield, we had Smith at the beginning of the season, and they could use that killer pass or get us in between those lines. Fish. Yeah, I know we've got Roberts who's performing great, but we don't really seem to be able to break teams down like we could last year. Yeah, sure. Max, anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I I, I, thought, I thought it was a great question. I, I think in terms of the tactical setup, I, 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 would, I would get used to this. I, I think Butler has got to a point now where it's 5-3-2, it's, it's but that's his favourite system. Yeah. Maybe if we got injuries, he might he might have to mix it up. But yeah, I think I would um, I, I would I would get used to this. I, particularly in the winter when the pitches are going to start getting worse, sides are going to be going more direct. I would I would get used to this settle. That's a good point, actually. That's a really good point about the the way they're starting to change now and what that might do to us systematically. But we'll head over to Twitter for our next question. I'm going to pose this one to both of you. It is it's a bit of a thinker, and we did have it earlier on. A few games ago, actually, when we had Ben Maidman, our our guest fan panelist, on, and he we took kind of did a season review. So Ian Sanderson on Twitter says, and I'll go to you first, Marco. With the Iron having played almost a third of their 24, 25 league fixtures, how would you a rate out of ten our league position? So league position rated out of ten. Well, I think we can rate. I think that's got to be a ten, right? B rate out of ten the quality of football. And C, rate out of 10, the manager's performance so far. So, Marco, first of all, out of 10 in terms of league position this season? It, it, it cannot be a 10, can it? We're, we're top of the league. Ooh, have, I, have, I, have I got a twist coming for you? <laughs> right, we'll come to you <laughs> soon, Max. <laughs> you might, no, we could, we could be good. Max, Max what, what have you done today? Are you okay? <laughs> 
I've, I've, I've had a busy day at work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, ten out of ten for league position, Marco. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the quality of football you've seen so far this season, how would you rate that out of ten? It sounds like it could be harsh here because there's been some nights where it's an eight or a nine, and there's been somewhere it's a two or a three. Um, but I'm going to go bang. I'm going to go five. But that's not necessarily. A, but I think Tamworth probably went got promoted on playing a five for sort of entertainment and everything. So that doesn't necessarily mean I don't think we'll go up. But look, it's not the most attractive some nights, and definitely not on those away days. See, this seems harsh to me. I, I maybe I, I'm. I'm wired a bit differently to you guys, but we, we, we're not oh, playing. No. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> we're not playing. We're not playing that free throwing fast football. I mean, Fazio was great. We won six nil, but we're not playing that often enough to say that the performances weren't anything really at a high high score. That's not like I said. Tamworth would have probably said the same last year. Their performances are great, but if it's getting results, who gives a shit? And then the final one is right out of ten. The performance of the manager so far this season. Uh, I'm going to be a bit nice here. I'm going seven. Um, look, we said earlier, Butler's learning on the job. Um, I think it was a big risk bringing somebody who hasn't had that experience, but look, he's top of the league in his first season at, at, at football management um, at the men's game. So, yeah, I'm going to go with seven. Still a still long way to go. Um, but if we're, we're at this point by the end of the season, then so be it. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with that. Right, so that gives you an average, I think, of like 7.7 7 out of 10, something like that. Something like that. Um, so, Max, same question for you. How would you, A, rate the league position so far this season? Uh, yeah, so, so Marco went for a 10 and a 5 and a 7. His average, that makes it 7.3? 7.25, 7. so oh. close. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 7.25 um, out of 10. That's interesting. So, roughly, roughly enough, anyway. Um, okay. um, in terms, of, in terms of our league position, um, I, I don't think I don't think I can go with 10, um, just because Curzon have got two games in hand on us, and if they take four, if they take four points from them, not six, then we won't be top. And obviously, we, we are top, but it's it's only on goal differences, relatively by our fingernails. The Chorley Kings Lynn result, if it had gone differently, wouldn't be top. And if we lose tonight at Spennymore, then we're probably going to be, you know, we're almost certainly going to be second, and very realistically, we could be third. At which point, then it's a disaster. Um, so on that basis, for the league position, I'll go an eight. Okay, so I didn't think you would be able to justify going any lower than a ten. However, you make you do make a good point about the games in hand. I would push back and say, even if we were third at the end of play tonight, I'm not sure I would say that was a disaster with so much football left to play and still in a playoff spot, considering I think every single one of us in our pre-season predictions, Max, thought we wouldn't win the league, so still above kind of expectations. But I don't want to upset you too much. Oh, oh, I, mate, I've, I've got a thick skin. Don't you worry. Those, th- those are those are fair and, and and reasonable points. But look, let's if we do lose tonight at Spennymore, and you know we went to Spennymore and lost last season, so it's certainly not certainly not impossible, particularly with the injuries we've got. Let's see what the reaction to it is like, and that will also depend on the performance of well, if it's anything like Spennymore last season, the referee's performance. So, rate out of 10 the quality of football so far this season? Um, I would probably be a little bit more generous than Marco on that front. I'd probably be prepared to go with seven. Um, I I don't really give a shit how we play. I, I never have. I The ultimate pragmatist in that if you've got the side to play a big, expansive 4-3-3, then fucking play. Get the best out of your players. Whereas if you, in the summer, go out and sign a lot of giants and you've got a low budget and you're part-time or whatever it might be, then play play to your strengths. There has been some good performances. There has been some disappointments, but the, the side that gets promoted will have played the best football, in my view, over the course of the season. And finally, and right out of ten, the performance of the manager so far this season. I, I think I would I would go the same as Marco. I, I would go for a seven. Um, so I think there has been some good points. I, I think some of the games his substitutions have worked. Some of them haven't. I um, like the way in which I know he has received criticism for this in some quarters, but I don't necessarily agree. 
I'm not convinced that slagging off your players in public constantly gets the best out of them. We're all, we're all human, you know. It's it's a world where you get a lot of public attention. Having a, a manager in any industry that, that at least defends you in public and then slags you off in close in, in behind doors that's that's a plus for me. So um, look, yeah, I, I would stick with a seven. I would stick with a seven. That gives you the same score, actually. I'm slightly different maths to you. I'm giving. I'm worked that out as seven point three out of ten. Uh, oh, you, 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 you will be right, Barry. You will be right. Okay, that's because I've I, I had seven point three, doubted it because you made me doubt myself, and then actually typed it on Google. What is a number as a percentage of another number, and typed it in and saw I am in fact correct. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Right. Next question then uh, comes to you from Aidan Wilkinson. It's a good question, this, and a bit of a thinker, and it might require a little bit of time. Aidan says, and I'm going to read the full question, would you change formation and whatever formation you choose, make your starting lineup for tonight? Because I know you'll all change something because you're not thickos. So, that's <laughs> what... <laughs> so the question started well from Aidan, and then it, it, it went down there at the end. I, I would love you to ask the last question to Aidan. <laughs> How we think Butler's doing this season? <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might ask him that. Actually. Next time I see him, I'm going to ask him. Next he should be banned. Time. He next should be banned time. from that fans page. Yeah, yeah, next. Yeah, I agree. Right. Marco, answer. Um, Pick that one apart for me. I'm going to get a bit edgy and mix it up. Cool. And it, formation, formation. Yeah, um, it's four, two, three, one. And yes, I've been on, I have just been, make sure you've done the maths there, right? <laughs> I've, I've been on FIFA. <laughs> um, but, oh, no, no, sorry, it's not far too free one. It's, what have I done here? Anyway, it's, it's a it's Christmas pudding with Tonka <laughs> in the middle there. <laughs> it's the sixpence. Yeah, it's, I've been harsh, but fair at the same time. So, what's your formation, Marco? It's dynamic. This dynamic. It's very like. I mean, he's playing different positions. Anyway, have you been, have you been into the? Have you been into like the football manager settings and you've sort of like moved them about yeah. manually? So it's a back five. Um, again, this is injuries yeah. forced me into this side, and I think with what we've got at the moment, I don't think we can probably okay. put, give me a back five. I'm going Fitzsimmons in goal. Um, oh, controversial. <laughs> uh, about five of Barrows, Coogan, Boyce, Nicholson and Denton coming back in um, after a birth of his child. Congratulations, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've then got two sitting. Okay. Clunan. Yeah. And I really like, and I think there's a play there, but I like Brogan. So I play yeah. Brogan. And then, this is where it gets a bit controversial. So our best player is probably Roberts in a 10. Yeah. I'm putting him out wide. Yeah, on the right or left? On the right, and then I'm playing Carlton on the okay. left. All right. And I'm playing Fishburne through the middle. And again, I don't think that's our best team, but I feel like with what we've got going ahead yeah. of tonight, something different. Will we play it? No, there's no chance whatsoever. But it's what I'd do. But Again, we've said it all season. Whitehall's ninety percent fit. We play. If I said why Whitehall's in a wheelchair after Sunday, <laughs> I'm rolling him on. I'm rolling him on. But, um, no, I just think Roberts again has been great in ten, and he's shown he can do it. But him out wide, and then Calton signed as a winger slash forward. Um, he's obviously very pacey. Was is out for a little while, so yeah, just something different. But I do think Bergen needs a bit more game time. I think there's a player there. Can I just chuck one in there? I. Would like to see and think this might be the perfect opportunity for Trimpton to come back into the squad. Like, where is he? Has, any, has anyone seen him? Is he alive? He did well, he did well at Spenny Moore as well, didn't he? Is that where he went last year? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. We've got, but the Trimpton's issue, if you like, is that we've we're very well covered in the middle of the park in central midfield. It's it's the area yeah. we've we've probably got the most strength in depth. But as as Marco is suggesting here, we might have to be a little bit tricky with our formation tomorrow to suit the fact that we. Uh, we're light on strikers, so Roberts yeah. might have to drop out of that ten and go. I really do, uh, yeah, I really do feel for Shrimpton because he came in against Geisley, where all of those eleven could have been dragged and had excuses to not play the following week. Since then, he's not started a game, and I think it has been it's been dealt with mm. sandwich there um, to get your only start in possibly the worst performance. Well, definitely the worst performance of the season. Um, mm. 
I do feel a bit for him. So, yeah, it'd be nice to see him play as well. But like Max said, we're very strong in the middle. There's Rowley, Clunan, Brogan, Shrimpton. There's, there's a lot of good players. Even Beeston now, we seem to have got away with playing him up front. So, he'd be down as a midfielder. Yeah. So for, for me, I'd have the same back five. So, Barrows, Coogan, Boyce, Nicholson, Denton. I'd, I'd, I'd play the same formation, if I'm being honest. My two holding midfielders would be Clunan and Shrimpton. Okay, I'd have Carlton and Roberts out wide, and Beeston would be my striker up top. That's how I'd Ooh. play it tomorrow. Over the fish, over fish. Yeah, I'm going Beeston over the fish tomorrow. Max, hit me up with your starting eleven, formation, and players. So, um, I thought they would play five at the back. I think that goes without saying. But on the basis of Whitehall, appears appears to be a doubt. And personally, I don't think he'll start tonight. And Look, I, t I do understand Marco's point about if he's in a wheelchair, he's starting. But if he's at a risk of aggravating his injury further, I really wouldn't start him because the last thing we need is for the news to break for Danny Wiles after six weeks. You know, if that happens, they've probably got to go and sign a striker. Um, 100%. I don't, I can't think of a time this season where 5 3 2 has worked effectively when Wiles or hasn't, um, you know, been on the field and been playing well. I don't think it's a system we can play effectively without Danny Whitehall, certainly not for 90 minutes. So on that basis, even though we're away from home, I would play four with the back tonight at Spenlock. Yeah. Um, right. Fitzsimmons in goal, obviously. Um, I would play Barrows at right back and the centre-half pair would be Boyce and Coogan on the basis that um, when I was leaving the exact lounge after the Radcliffe game, Evans was literally hobbling down the stairs. Um, yeah, Evans won't be playing. That's, yeah. that's the um, and a, because I think we are reliant on these long throws, and B, to compensate defensively, I would play Nicholson at left back. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that, Max. Um, and I, I would say to I would say to Denton, spend a couple more days with your newborn baby. Like, you know, it's life, it's it's only football. Enjoy it. Um and then out of possession, it's probably a four, two, three, one. In possession, it's probably a four, three, three. Um Clunan as the sitter at all times. And then Beeston and Scales in front of him. If Beeston pushes forward into that 10 roll, Scales can got, drop, drop deep as you've got the two holders. Yeah. Um, but if you've got Beeston and Scales as your six and eight, if you like, I think in the midfield, that's really that's really important. I know Scales has got his detractors, but if you're playing forward or back, I, I think his legs do add protection, particularly if he's dropping to give Nicholson a bit of cover. Um, but if you then... You know, in possession, if you or, or apps, you play play four two three one. If you've got that front three of, of Carlton, Beeston, and Roberts, I think that can be really fluid. And you can have in possession, you can have almost any combination of that. You could have Beeston drop to the left. You could have Roberts come inside to be number ten. You could have Carlton and the fullbacks on either wing. Um, and then on the basis, the Whitehalls, um, Whitehalls not fit. It would be Fishburn through the middle. Yeah, so you've got Carlton and Roberts out wide, Fishburne's yeah. kind of like your, your central striker. Yeah. And Clunan, you sit in midfielder with Beeson and Scales playing just in front of him. So yeah. that I mean that is a dynamic formation, isn't it, for sure. So we've all got very different views actually on, on what, what will happen tomorrow. I seem to be the only one chucking uh shrimp to well, well, no 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 that's that's not what we think will happen tomorrow. We all think tonight, we've got yeah. five at the five at the back. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What we think we should go with tonight? Yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would, I would play. I would play four at the back tonight. But I, I, I don't think they will. I, I don't. No, no, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Right. I'm going to chuck a controversial one here. Richard Parkinson has been back in touch, and Richard says, "Bax, would you take Jimmy Dean back over Butler?" Right now, no, because I think paying sporting compensation and sacking Butler would be a financial mistake that I'd rather see invested in a new striker. Do I think sacking Dean last season was a mistake? Yeah, I do. Um, I think if the referee doesn't turn us down for two penalties, we beat Boston. And I think he deserved a, a season with a no off-field carnage. And look, by sacking Dean in the summer, we send the message that second is a failure. And I think those are the standards by which I'm judging Butler, and but I think a lot of the a lot of the supporters are too. So um, I wouldn't take him back, but I, I still think sacking him was a mistake. Yeah, I'm going to chuck a couple of things out there. One, I don't necessarily agree that the board sent a message that finishing second is a failure. I think the message was 
not getting promotion is a failure. So actually, if we finished seventh and went up, of co- like you cannot quantify that, cannot qualify that as a failure. We've, we've been promoted, something that Dean was unable to do. The other point that I would suggest to you is, I, I again, I don't know if I'm seeing things differently, but yeah, the football maybe at times hasn't been great, but we are top of the league and like... We, I, I, I disagree. Actually, I don't think Butler is inflexible as others do. I do think it's kind of different horse. You know, his horses for courses. The way we played on Saturday, all right, we didn't get the win, but it was a completely different performance than it was against Farsley, and we still managed to get a result from it. All right, it wasn't three points, but we could have quite easily lost that game. Okay, yeah, I'll, I will push back on a couple of bits of that. If if we had lost that game, I would have had no complaints. If there was any side that deserved to win that game, it wasn't us, it was Radcliffe. Um, look, I, I do understand where you're coming from in terms of not getting promoted being, being a failure, but I would say two things to that. One, I think the league is weaker than it is last season. Tamworth has got 96 points, and I don't think there will be a side getting 96 points this season. We got 88 last year, and right now, that'd be, that might be enough. It'd be, it'll be close. Um, it might not be enough, but it might be on the basis that no side is really stringing a, a big run together. Um, and look, rightly or wrongly, in in the Boston game, we should have had two penalties. With VAR in that game, we get two penalties. And I think that sacking any manager off the back of that in the context of the 18 months of off-field fucking carnage that he dealt with and dealt with very well, I, I, I still think it's harsh and I, I will always think it's harsh. And that, that's not Butler's fault, but that's that's the situation he's inherited. And I thought it was a great question and I will always an- answer it honestly. No, that's fair enough. Ma- Marco, anything to add? No, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm similar level to Max there. Um, I didn't want Jimmy to go. Um, but to say we'd be in a better position with Jimmy this year than we are with Butler, I think, well, it won't be true. There's some games this year where I think we've got results where I don't think we've got them with Jimmy Dean. And then it's, a good, it's a good question, though. Yeah, there's some games because are... like there's no right or wrong, is there? Like, yeah, I agree I th- with a lot of what Max is saying, but I've come to a different conclusion. I, I, yeah, I, think I, think I mean, in terms of whether or not we'd be in a, be- a better or a different position with Dean, I, yeah. the honest answer is I don't know because yeah. the, the the recruitment in the summer would have been different I think yeah, and, and yeah. looking at a different profile of, of player and honestly on that basis fuck and look, like, like Max said Jimmy Dean had to contest with a Tamworth there's not going to be a Tamworth like <laughs> yeah Butler is going to have a creek like Max said 88 points might do it um, Curzon win those games in hand and I think they like I know it's early days still but they not saying they run away with it, but that they for me there will be a good chat. And Charlie is they're going to be up there, you know. I think I think the main the main thing to take from that question, I think Matt's got the nail on the head. I think he deserved a, a crack at a shit free season. Um, that that's the main thing out of that. But again, look, Butler's here. We're top of the league. Um, to be comparing those two is, is mental. But yeah, yeah, and it's I not know. right. It, like in a way, it is right. It's a good question, but I mean, Butler's here, and we're top of the league. Like. I, <laughs> what are we all getting so aggy about? <laughs> I'm going to smash it. <laughs> right. A couple, I know it was push for time, but a couple more. Quick one for you, Marco. Paul Hicks says, I'm wondering what your thoughts on what to change to break teams down. Is it just missing Danny White or, or is there something else we need? Teams are going to set up to get a point against us and we need to be able to react differently. I think that comes with what we maybe answered earlier regarding sort of the fluidity um, Roberts has been getting those goals and assists but someone's sort of unlocked those defences uh, I know a lot of people have mentioned Butterfield and stuff with, with regards to last season but look at home it, it seems really popular and I can understand why teams do it to come and well, part of the bus put plenty of men behind the ball it seems to do the trick against us and um, look that's why Butler's paid what he is it's, it's, to, it's to unlock those defences and try to figure out a way around it but we don't seem to be able to do it very well at the minute. To, to me, the answer in those situations is width. There has to be more width. It's the it's the big, biggest single downside of when you play 3-5-2 or 5-3-2 is your wing-backs become so important. Think of that Chester game in the second half. There must have been five different occasions where Barrow's at right wing-back, check back inside. Um, if, if a side is going to try and park the buses, bank the four, bank the five, what they're looking to do is compress the space. 
contest it in as small an area as possible where they can get the most amount of defenders possible. Spread the game, make the pitch big, especially if you're away from home. Pull the full backs wide. Look for those pockets of space that if you have got Roberts playing as a 10, you can exploit. It's, it's, for me, it's width. You, you've got to have more width going forward. It's, it's strange because last year, we was in a similar position with the smaller teams at home coming and setting up like that. But we played with wingers. We had your, your Sembi Ferrises and obviously we had wingers at that point and we still couldn't seem to rate teams down like this year. It is really frustrating. I don't know what it is at Grandford Park that we can't seem to... I, th- I, th- I think our home record last season was pretty good. It was, it was the away performances. I think of... Yeah. I think, I I think of, um, of Spennymore. I think of Darlington. I think of Blythe. I think of South Shield. Their, their home form was not an issue last season in my view. It was their away form. What did we finish? Eight points behind Tamworth. Well, I've, I've just never four away games off the off the bat there where they could have very easily got nine more points. Yeah, but we we, de- we definitely saw. I think we saw a few times. I think I'll stop my head, but I'm not saying it was an issue. But we did see it regularly. Teams coming and setting up in a certain way, um, and I think it it will happen a lot this season. There seems to be a blueprint, um, especially while we're playing this five. Like Max said, if Barrows hasn't got it in his head that look, you're on the wing today, essentially, and you can be on the wing because these aren't throwing much at us then we do look very one-dimensional. One that jumped out to me, actually, that fits that category, was Curzon coming to our gaff and the way they set up that day and last season, that is. And, and I think that kind of falls into what you're saying there, Marco. Final one from the fans. I'm going to leave you with a, a super fan. Super fan himself, Mr Stuart Moore. And for a bit of balance, we've, we've got Stuart saying, I felt it was a poor game Saturday, but... I have seen a lot worse. Not sure how some of our fans would have coped in the 70s on a bleak January midweek game. <laughs> the standard of football was awful at best. The tirade of abuse against players and Andy is frankly embarrassing. Yes, we never got going, but we they were a physical side who bullied our front two all through the game, especially Sammy, but he's a young lad and in time he will learn how to deal with that sort of play. I'm Carlton's biggest fan, but they completely shut him down. We had our chances, goal line scrambles, we get a point and a clean sheet thanks to Ross super save. Some fans need a reality check. It's a game with two teams on this occasion. We were second best to a decent team, but I believe we will be much higher at the end of the season than the present position suggests. I'm not sure how we... Oh, how, sorry, that they will be much higher this season than the current position. I was going to say, I'm not sure we can be higher than first. Where's... Is, was there a... God, it's like being at a Labour party meeting. Where was the question in there? There's no question. Oh. There's, no, there's no question. Just just a okay. wave of positivity from... Right, uh, I will react to a couple of bits on that. I think... <laughs> and I'm going, to, I'm going to quote here. I think to describe Saturday as a tirade of abuse, that, that that's not right. I wouldn't call that a tirade of abuse. I think it was a a trickle of frustration. I certainly wouldn't say that there was a tirade of abuse directed to the butler and the players. I just don't think that's right. Um, there was a lot of booze at the referee, but um, I, I agree with him about Radcliffe, though. If they play like that between now and the rest of the season, they won't go down. Thought, thought they had a good game plan. Thought they looked to hit us on the break. It's not their fault the referee was letting them slow the game down when the ball went out. They can only play the hands they're dealt. And look, they should have won the game in the 92nd minute, you know. They, they it was a great save from Ross. I didn't think it was an awful penalty, but um, if they'd have scored that, I'd have had no complaints. Marco, I can see you wanting to, you, you're chomping at the bit there. Was it, was, tri- was it the trickle of Max, frustration that got you going? Max might have just cursed um, Radcliffe there because I remember us saying earlier on in the season that Need a Market looked quite good. And since then, they've been absolutely shy. Dogs, mate. <laughs> Um, but yeah, well, I think Max is right, and I think we touched on it earlier. It, the frustration comes from seeing what we did to Faza midweek, and then just a few days later, struggling to break Radcliffe down at home. Um, we've we've got the ammunition, and it's just so frustrating. I, I can understand fans being uh, being a bit miffed off, but I can also see Stuart's point. Look, it's not panic station. I can't believe we're talking about panic station at the top of the league. Um, <laughs> All will take a positive result tonight, spending more. Um, and look, results go our way. We've got a nice little cushion again. So let's just stick with them, stick with the team. And uh, yeah, boo the ref by all means, but not the players. <laughs> right. That draws to a close the, the fans' question and thoughts section. So, Marco, do you want one? Go on, man. Do you want one? I'm hungry. You're gagging for one. There we go then. <laughs> what are you on about? This. 
we are on about this week's Spy in the Camp. Well, I'm pleased to say this week I'm joined by Spennymore Town fan Desi Ward. How are you doing, Desi? All right, thanks. Uh, yourself? Yeah, not bad at all, thank you. I mean, I would be. We're top of the league, mate. <laughs> all right for some, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right. Well, talk to us about Spennymore then. A bit of a mixed bag this season, currently sitting in, in 12th place. How do you view that? Uh, well, I think it's probably where we deserve to be. We've we've had uh, our home record at the start of the season was really good, and away from home we weren't so good. And over the last sort of month, it's sort of turned round. We've gone a bit stale at home, but we've started picking up results away. But we've had a lot of injuries this season that hasn't helped, and we've had some awful referee. Not making excuses, but we've had some really awful refereeing decisions. Mm. But I think overall we are where we are. I think that's about probably right. That's this level, though, isn't it, when it comes to refereeing decisions? I mean, there's some absolute stinkers last season for us. I, I seem to think, actually, when you did a job on us at your place, I seem to yeah, think... Yeah, I know was... exactly what you're going to say. Uh, that, yeah. Our goal, when we beat you 1-0, I think that was a bit dubious, to say the least. Yeah, am I, am I right in thinking that was a game where Butterfield scored for us and it was disallowed or something mad like that happened? I don't I know if you remember I think so, that. yeah. That, then we scored and sort of the keeper sort of got pushed over but didn't, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and... yeah. Listen, it's all ancient history now, Desi. I'm not bitter yeah. at all, I promise you. Yeah. Um, so, without a winning three, a 1-1 draw uh, on Saturday away at Needham Market, is that a point gained or two points dropped? Uh, it's two points dropped, without a doubt. I mean, I was actually there. It was a, a long day for everybody. But overall, in the game, we could have we could have and should have probably won 5 or 6 nil easily. We were by far the better side and Unfortunately, we sort of switched off in the last minute and they got an equaliser. We, we should have won it comfortably, really. Bit of a trek, but how long did that take you to get down to need a market? Yeah, we set up at seven o'clock in the morning and we landed at the Three Horseshoes pub about one o'clock. That was with a half an hour stop as well on the way. So five and a half hours travel, say. Yeah, the life of uh, being a non-league football fan, eh, mate? This is the National League North as well. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's mad, isn't it? To be fair, it must be hard for them as well because they've got to come up here and go to the likes of uh, Darling and Shields. So they've got some long trips too. And obviously last season, you know, finishing in ninth place, fell away towards the end, but kind of picked up just after Christmas under, under Graham Lee. How did you see last season? Uh, well, it was uh, sort of a game of two halves, really. The first half of the season, we were average at best, and we went on a really, I think we went, we, at one point, we got three points out of 39 or something silly like that. And then Graham Lee came in just after Christmas, and uh, he got, a, I think we drew our first game and then lost one. But after that, we, we went 14 games unbeaten and got really from the bottom all the way to on the verge of the playoffs when we just missed out by a point with a couple of games to go. Yeah, frustrating as well because, I know we were just talking off air there, and it's kind of been the trend of the last couple of seasons, just narrowly missing out on those playoffs, as yeah. you say. Yeah, I think it's three or four seasons. We've always been there or thereabouts around the playoffs. But I think last year we missed by a point. And the season before that, I think on the last game of the season, after 85 minutes, we were actually fourth. And I think it was... Two teams scored and we ended up missing out by goal difference, which was mad. Mm. But like you said, that's our league. That's the way it is. Yeah, and it, it is a mad division, isn't it? There's there's no getting away from it. How, how do you guys see it in terms of like where you kind of fit into the hierarchy? Because for Scumfort fans, it is, you know, it's frustrating for us because everyone seems to want to knock us off our perch. You know, no matter who we play, it's, it's, it's insufferable at times, to be honest with you, Desi. Yeah. Don't get us wrong. We just we a little fish in a big pond. We lo we love going to places like like yourselves at Scunthorpe, Hereford, massive ex football league clubs. We mm. just a little town, like as people say, we a little town in County Durham. And I think to be fair, we punch it well above our weight. We've been in the league for five or six years now, and we've we've done okay every year. Like we said, we've either got to the playoffs or only just missed out. But really, I think we punch it above our weight. It must be difficult for the likes of you guys come to these little towns. To be fair, you've probably never even heard of us till you played us. 
I mean, more so for maybe like Needham Market. I certainly never heard of that. Uh, Rush All Olympic, probably another one. But it's not to take anything away from yourselves or other teams. Ultimately, you know, we're not a big team. We are a team that plays National League North football. Like this is our level now, and and it's yeah. the level that you guys are at. It's you know we're no we're no better than you guys. We're in the same division, so that's that's very much yeah. how we see it. Um, last yeah. season. Obviously, we came up against you twice, as I say. You did a bit of a job on us, really, at your place. Um, and by that, I don't mean you, you did a smash and run. I don't mean that at all. I mean, it was just a perfect performance against us, really. But the the, the, the fixture at our, our gaff, obviously, was 6-0. Um, must have been a tough one to watch that, Desi. It, it was. It was. I mean, this, I mean we, t- we must have took over 200 fans that day. It was, on a it Tuesday was, night as well, you know. Tuesday night, to be fair. It was... It was a, for a lot of it, it's a big day out, like I said, going to places like it's just a shame it wasn't on a Saturday. But unfortunately, we uh, we didn't start great. Then we had Ben Pollock sent off, and it just went from bad to worse. But we, we got behind the lads till the 90th minute, which we always will do win, lose, or draw. And unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. And it was by far the better side that day. I'm surprised you let me talk about it, actually. I thought you would there. Uh... Like he was just going to bat me away, to be honest with you. Just, yeah, just well, you've got to take them off with your smooth, haven't you? Yeah, so. that's it. Well in, mate. You took it like a champ. Just just looking at the fixtures this season, we're hosting you towards the back end of the season, actually, 12th of April, which is a Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff. So yeah. hopefully, you know, you can can come and, and, and maybe bring three 300 plus. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? No, I, think we, I think we will do, yeah. That, that'd be great. Because it's, it's like I said, it's a big deal for us. We, we love that. We love just not just the game itself, the whole experience of having a day out and sort of visiting these big clubs. Because 10 years ago, we would have only dreamt of being where we are now, really. But like you said, we are, we deserve it now. We know better than you, you know better than us. We're both at the same level, and that's just the way it is. We've stepped up and you've sort of fell down over the last few years as, as, as it is. Yeah, that's that's the way it goes, Desi. Right. So, I am fans making the way up to. To spend more this evening, what can they expect from the the trip to the brewery field? Ooh, well, it'll be as you know when you go. It's always a friendly atmosphere. It's a lovely place. Our grounds come on leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. It, it'll be a great atmosphere. Hopefully, the pitch is in very very good condition at the moment. So I think it'll be a good game of football for both teams. And finally, stylistically, tactically, what what can we expect from Spenny Moore? They are. Uh, a uh, ten men behind the ball, or will they look to have a good go this evening? No, no, no. I think we'll have a we'll have a go. We certainly won't put people behind the ball, especially at home. We'll we'll try and keep the ball on the floor, pass it around, and maybe catch it on the counter attacks. But we we won't sort of sit behind the ball. We'll play football and we'll uh, we'll go for it. I think. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time today, Desi. And obviously, after tonight's game, we wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, and the same to you. Thanks very much. Well, they were the thoughts there of Desi Ward, Spennymore Town fan. And as I'm sure the, the listeners and the viewers can see, I'm now joined by Gareth, an absolute seamless one. So uh, what do you think of that, guys? <laughs> uh, um, I thought Desi spoke, you know, spoke well. So, you know, he obviously goes to the games and watches them. And um, I think he gave a true account of the way things are and what he expects. So, yeah, it's all about what happens on the pitch, though, isn't it? People can talk about games and how well teams are doing or how bad teams are doing. And then, you know, down to the place on the pitch for 90 minutes, 95 minutes to, to what happens. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, you got to take things with a pinch of salt with what people say. But he seemed genuine enough. He seemed to know his stuff. And, uh, yeah, fair play, does he? Well, that's it. I think John had my pants down last week telling me Radcliffe were going to come and play attractive football. So uh, I'm trying. I really want to believe, Desi, that tonight we're going to see something from Spennymore. But my instinct tells me I'm not too sure, Gareth. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see something from Scunthorpe. But... Yeah, me too. Well, before before the spine camp there, we, were, we had a bit of an extended section there. We went through the, the thoughts of the fans and questions from the fans. And we had Max and Marco telling us what they thought. But, you know, let's spend five, ten minutes, Gareth, talking about the game on Saturday against Radcliffe and looking ahead to tonight's game at Spennymore. Nil-nil on Saturday. Do you think we got out of there? We should be thankful with the point, really. I think we should be thankful with a point because I think I said it in the vlog that for me and um, Radcliffe were the better team. They had the they had more chances. I felt they played better. Um, I know other fans I've read other fans' thoughts on it that you know Radcliffe were this, Radcliffe were that. They were time wasting, time wasting, time wasting. And I just think 
they played to their strength. They were a physical team. They bullied, they harassed, they were, you know, they went toe to toe with us. And it was hard to tell who was top of the league and who was in the relegation zone. It really was. It was that type of a game. And I know these games come around every so often, but for Scunthorpe of late, they seem to be coming around more often than not. And, and did, um, did... yeah, go on. And do you think we missed Whitehall? Do you think that was a key factor? Massively. In performance? Massively. Massively. I know he's got many detractors. That you know, they don't like him, he doesn't do enough. But for me, he was missed massively. We just didn't have that focal point up front for me. You know, I know Fishburne was up there trying his best, but I felt like he got bullied. You know, he's a he's a young, young professional. Um, he's got he's learning the game as players that were playing for um, Radcliffe, you know, in the mid thirties that have been around the game for a long time, knew what to do, and they just harassed him and bullied him. You know, so yeah, he was missed. He was Massively missed. I think there were a few times we looked across the ball in to the box and um, there weren't really any options. And so it got passed back backwards to try and start again. And um, But yeah, you could see it was missed. And I guess the, the tone of the game was set quite early on with, with Will Evans limping off injured and Maxi having to come on. How well do you think Maxi did under those circumstances? And obviously he gave a penalty away at the end. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought he did all right. You know, coming in... Um, it was a physical game and whoever came in had to deal with it so you know but I thought he did all right I'll be honest yeah he gave the penalty away but Fitzsimmons um redeemed him at the end there but it made me realize that the, the depth of our squad isn't what we think it is you know when you look at the bench like Maxi comes on in the 18th minute I think it was and you look at the bench and there's four midfielders that at that then, you just think, how could we change the game with four midfielders? Do, do you live in a magic house? There's cupboards opening, but have you got a ghost there? What's, what's I do, that? yeah. It's, it's the Halloween spirit is still <laughs> hanging around. <laughs> Cheers, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Deb, you can rely on her. This, listen, this this is live podcast, baby. This is what you get. I told you not to come in. I thought it would be Kendall coming in, but no, yeah. it's Debbie. <laughs> well, they should reach those top covers. And obviously, Fitz, as you mentioned, Fitzsimmons saved there. Uh, cracking save, wasn't it? Because it was a really good penalty, was, actually. Yeah, 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 it was. It was. It was down low to his right hand side. And um, yeah, he got, he got across well to it and saved it. So, but I said at the time that if um, Radcliffe had scored it, I wouldn't have begrudged him it. You know, I thought that, you know, yeah, they deserved a point. But if they'd have took all three, yeah, they'd have took all three. I wouldn't have thought. You know what I mean? I want to regular expletives or anything like that. They, they just played well for me. Just played to the strengths. And we heard from Stuart Morley earlier on in the podcast, early on in the podcast, saying that he thought Butler got a tirade of abuse on Saturday. Max countered that by saying it was more of a trickle of frustration. How did you yeah. see the fan reaction? Was it somewhere in between uh, the two? Yeah, there were during the match there were moans and groans. You know, you can hear them on the vlog, but that's just part and parcel of the way we were playing. You know, um, I just think the fans were frustrated. It wasn't quick enough. There was a lot of build-up play or trying to build up. But like I say, Whitehall was missed and there wasn't that like focal point up front mm. that we could knock the ball into. And was it, yeah, that, was, that was his type of game for me. I think he'd have loved that game, just the physicality of it, just getting involved, you know. But then you look at it and think, well, you've got a booking to be missing games anyway. It's, you know, it's one of them games, but no, he was missed. But yeah, there was a bit of... Frustration, but I wouldn't say it was a tarot of abuse. I didn't hear anyone calling him out, or you know, like there was it where was it Chester or previous mm -hmm. game where people have had a go at him. So no, it wasn't that bad, but it was just, it was just a frustrating day all around the field. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. It's it's been a weird season. We talked about that with with uh, Marco and Max just before the spine the camp saying. We've all kind of got different views on where we are this season. And really, instinctively, I will always defend Butler at this point in the season because we're top of the league, Gareth. Yeah. We are top yeah. of the league, yeah. mate. Yeah. I oh, know we are. And, you know, we're top, but I don't know how we're top of the league still. Um, obviously, it was a great start to the season that, you know, that's like faltered away now. But it put us in that position to be dropping points and still be top. And it's ultimately in our hands. Still, you know, we're not we're not playing catch up. We're not playing chasing teams down. Um, would it be better if we were chasing teams down? I don't know. Um, we might have to find that out soon. Um, but no, we're top, and 
you know, if we can keep picking up wins, hopefully, then we should stay top. Well, you you would hope so. I mean, the only way is <laughs> up, unless, of course, you go down. Uh, news coming out of the club today, brilliant news, actually, the announcement of the new CEO, Matt Roberts. Probably <laughs> the worst-kept secret in football, if I'm being honest. It was going around everywhere on social media. Yeah. But, um, that The announcement's been made now. Matt Roberts in at the club. Please, pleasing, pleasing for you. Happy? Um, yeah, I think it's. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good appointment. I think it'll help uh, Michelle and the rest of the team having somebody in like that to work with all departments and you know help them out as well. So it's a new, it's a new um, position by him. It's the first time coming and doing it at a club. So um, it'll be a work in progress as well, a bit like Butler. You know, is learning on the job. So, but no, I think you know it could only. Hopefully, go well for him and for the club. And I guess we'll see where we're at at the end of the season. I guess it'll be a really difficult, not difficult, but it'll be a completely new challenge for him. And I guess this is where he where he wants to take his career, where he wants to take his life. And listen, he'll come to realise very soon if he's listening to this. I'm sure he'll have picked this up already. The fans expect the fans expect a lot, don't they, Gareth? They do. They do. They'll be on to him. Uh, I'm giving him a month. Yeah, they'll be, and, on, um, they'll be telling him who we should sign. How many times do you think he'll hear Deck Howell's name in the next four weeks? <laughs> Several. Well, I, I spoke to him on Saturday. I did know as well. Um, I spoke to him on Saturday. I just said, you know, I think we need some loan players in. <laughs> just, just you know, dropping it in there. But, yeah, look, but you, no, you, think, you get about, don't you, Gary? That... You get about. Well, it's been no. Um, <laughs> um, but no, I think... Uh, He's got to learn on the job. The fans have got to give him time as well. They can't just jump straight down his throat and expect miracles. You know, I don't know what they're expecting from him to start with anyway. Like I say, it's a different role. He's been in TV, presenting sports, super bikes. So he won't have the mic in his hand. He might feel more comfortable if he had a mic in his hand when he's um, around the ground. I don't know. But yeah, we just, just give him time and let's see how he gets on. Well, maybe Ultimately, us- he's not going to be the one putting the ball in the back of the net. No, maybe as I said, maybe give us a few tips on a uh, bit of engagement. How to get get these numbers keep going up as they seem to do. But uh, right, it's not the only person you spoke. Not the only person you spoke to on Saturday, Gareth. I saw you uh, flirting with Jono as well on the old vlog. No, yeah, no. He was, do you know what? It was really good. I went up. I saw him sat on the table. They came into the lounge. The whole team came. In so you lounge. harassed him, yeah? And um, I went. Well, no, I was walked up and I just congratulated him. On the, on the point, you know, I said they played well. Told him I thought they played well. Please and come on my vlog. appreciative of that. <laughs> I said that after about half an hour. I had to put him up for half an hour. Um, but, yeah, we're talking about half an hour to him. I was just about the game and, you know, and he was on about his 700th game in charge with Bernard. And he was just really, he was happy that it was at, a, at Scunthorpe. He said it could have been at any other ground, you know, but to be at a, a club like Scunthorpe and the ground, the surroundings... He was happy with that and um, something to look back on for him, he said. Yeah, nice but, one. Yeah, right. no, it, was, it was really good. Really good sport. Too. Good, good. I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad for you, mate. I'm happy for you. Always always nice to see you Thank get you. your flowers, Gareth. <laughs> so just looking ahead to tonight's <laughs> game against Benny Moore then. Be a tough challenge. Um, how do you see this one unfolding? After last season? Um, I think it all depends on the referee. Um, but no, it'll be a, a boisterous crowd. The home crowd will be getting behind their team, getting into the Scunthorpe players um, and fans, probably. Um, I think we've just got to turn up. You know, we missed Denton as well on Saturday. Um, it was said to me that it's all right. Kelly's a good player, but Kelly is a left back. He's not a wing back. Um, and that Denton was missed. And Denton was missed, you know. He's a good player, Denton. And, and as well, John, when I was speaking to him, he said, then um, Denton and Whitehall were the two players that they picked out in the team. So he was happy that neither of them were playing. You know, hopefully Denton's back in. Whitehall's not going to be back in. I'm not led to believe. So to have one of them back will be a good thing. Um, but yeah, I just think that we've got to be on our game again. And hopefully um, Fishburne puts a performance in. I'm not saying he put a performance in the other day, but he was bullied. He was, he was a physical game. And I just, you know, hopefully it's not as physical. Hopefully, indeed. And uh, there we go then, the thoughts of Iron Army, Mr. Gareth Holden. So, 
that wraps it up for the I and Our podcast. Thanks once again for giving us a listen. Thanks once again for tuning in. We'll see you at the back end of the week as we review the Spenny Moore game and look ahead to the game against Buxton coming up this weekend. Up the iron. Up the iron.